Hey guys, uh, Ryan Dunford here uh, with another quick uh, Tech Tip Thursday video. Um, today we're going to build uh, a diff or a rear diff for an 8XE 2.0. Um, and um, just wanted to show you guys real quick and I just wanted to make a video where all you do is build a diff. So let's get started. So the first thing I always do, I got to new pumpkin here so i'm going to put the bearing on the pumpkin uh, i'm going to put the bearing on the diff here and then i typically am going to take a sharpie and i'm going to write the weight oil on here uh, the D, you, the gear is used so i already have four written on there for 4k diff fluid so that's the first thing i'm going to do then the very next thing i'm going to do i'm going to take some fresh out drives Take some of our gold grease. Uh, what is that? TLR77003. There's a lot of people that make good gold grease. Um, but this is what I prefer to use to lubricate uh, the outdrives. Now, whenever you're rebuilding a diff, putting fresh oil or whatnot, unless you're just kind of putting diff oil in, burning it, putting diff oil in, you know, just trying diff oil after diff oil after diff oil. Um, whenever you're rebuilding a diff, you should be re-greasing it, okay? So I grease. You got to get grease in that little grease pocket, but you don't need way too much grease. So you can see just a nice smooth coat of grease. And take it, slide it in here, kind of work it in and out, and make sure... I got a good smooth action there. And then I will do the other side here. Oops, I don't need that much. Um, and so, as I was saying, every time you, you kind of are changing oil because you think maybe the oil is, uh, you know, time, time to be replaced, right? You should be re-greasing these shafts. It's going to make a much longer lasting experience. And the reason we started using this gold grease is it just lasts longer than the black grease. So the black grease works fine, um, but the gold grease is good for, you know, different amounts of hours on uh, the rear diff and the center diff and the, and the front diff um, versus. So I'm going to close this up. And now we're going to do this here. So now I'm going to do the other side too. We're going to, just going to make sure the grease is all the way in there. Yep, pretty good. And there's not, you can see there's not like a ton of extra grease in here. If there was, I actually would wipe it off. Um, but there's not, so we're okay. So I'm just going to clean off my, I just used a 2.5, just a random wrench. The next thing I'm going to do is the O-rings. So the new O-rings for the V2 for the 8X 2.0 are clear. Um, I'm actually going to get, the black grease that it came with. Um, we do make a like a green slime O-ring grease um, on the eight scale side of the world. You know, I actually just prefer to use the black grease, um, and this just provides a little bit of lubrication. I mean, the when they're new, um, I only regrease these. You know, probably every three or four times I rebuild my diff, um, but I just put some grease in the middle of it. I'm going to kind of wipe off some of the excess. That way it doesn't just go right into the, you know. So you can see there's grease on there. It's slippery. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put it down right on the shaft there. Right? And then I'm going to take my needle nose, and I'm just going to get in here and push that O-ring down so that's all the way in there. And then I'm going to actually take the pin and insert that into the hole. Make sure it's, you know, where it's supposed to be halfway between. Take it out, spin it, make sure it spins freely, guys. Um, you know, if that doesn't spin right, that can become a, a big issue. This was the first O-ring I greased. You can see I got a lot of extra grease on that one. <laughs> Um, 
Definitely don't need that much. Side's a little bit easier because uh, it's shallower. But push that down into the pocket. Um, the O-rings, I tend to replace those, you know. Depends how much you run, but it doesn't hurt to replace them. They come in a 10-pack, uh, you know, kind of hindsight's 20-20. It probably should have been like a 12-pack. So you got, you know, two full rebuilds out of it. I don't know. 10 is just a normal number we use for stuff. So sorry. Um, but yeah, so it fits down in there. Everything rotates nice and freely. Uh, so we're all good on that side. So now both those sides are kind of built. Now it's all the gears and everything. So the first thing I'm going to do, I actually typically take, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil down in the bottom here just so that um, you know, we've got some oil down there. That's 4,000 weight. Um, I prefer these bigger bottles. I'm going to take one of the gears. These are used gears. I tried to clean them as best as I could um, since I'm, you know, replacing the pumpkin. I'm taking it and I'm pushing it down. Now, you might have to take it and rotate it until it goes in and the pin goes in and everything. Uh, in this case, I didn't, so you can see the oil, whoops, kind of covering the gear pretty much. Um, now I'm going to build up uh, each of my pins. These are aluminum pins. I prefer to use the aluminum pins. Um, so I basically put a gear and then a shim. Whoops, slid way over. Oh, and these are used shims too, so they're st sticky, so they got oil on them too. Sorry about that. And then one of the little blocks, right? Um, now, some of them stick more. I mean, they rotate in here just fine. It's not like they're super sticky, but now, so now I've got one. So now it's the pin holder, a shim, what's called a planet gear, okay? So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So planet gear, shim. Now that I know they're sticky, I'm okay. And pin holder. I'm actually going to take this as a unit, and I'm going to stick it in here now. Drop it in there. Push these out so that the pin holders are all the way against the wall. And push them down. Right. So push down on both of those. I'm going to straighten the notch so it's in the center. It will all kind of straighten itself when you first put it down there. So now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to build this with the notch down. See, I got a little bit of crud on there. You don't want any cat hair or anything. I got cats, so... Cat hair is kind of part of my life, so I've become very aware of it and uh, watch for it nowadays. But if these are sticky, I always just kind of give them a little little spin, make sure that, you know, they're okay. And then I line it up okay, you know, so that the notch and this are, you know, lined up properly. Go this side. Just like I did the other. Pull that out, and now I will stick the second side in. It's kind of hard to see down in here, but now I will take and I will push that down in there. That's what lines up everything inside there, guys. Um, let me see if I can turn that. Right, so now everything, all of these, I can look at all the pin holders and make sure they're just below level. They're all at the same level. Everything looks good in there. I'm going to put some oil in here to about the top. So they come to about the top of the um, planetary gears there or the small gears, whatever you want to call them. I used to try to weigh diffs, but people use so many different parts that it was kind of hard to start to maintain. But you can see the oil is kind of right to the top of all those gears now. Okay. So now what I'm going to do 
and I'm going to do this so that you guys can see it, is I'm going to drop this in, make sure the teeth kind of line up in there, let it go down. You can see the oils kind of starting to come up some, right? So I'm going to take my finger, pressing down, come across it one way. You can see I got a bunch of oil off of there. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees, and I'm going to go the other direction now. Okay, then I'm just going to take, get a tiny bit of oil right out of the center there. Basically, you don't want it to hydro lock. You just want to find a way that you can build a diff consistently so that one run to the next, if you were to build it two times, it would come out and feel the same. And there's diff checkers and all kinds of things you can check with uh, out there to, to kind of learn that. Um, but that's how I do that part. And then here the, is the paper gasket. I usually take a kind of a tiny bit of oil and get it a little sticky so that it helps it to stay in place. Um, but I line that up. And then this I bring in. So I've got my screw holes like this, right? I'm going to take and bring this in the same way. I'm not worried about where the pin is yet. Um, but our rear gear goes over the top like that. Um, you can take just to make sure everything's lined up and kind of do one of these numbers, stick one into the hole, and then you rotate that until the pin lines up. And now this gets to be pushed all the way down, right? So now this is down all the way. I'm going to grab my Hitachi. It's on five right now. Um, some titanium screws. And again, this is a new case. So the big thing, you always want to push into the screw really good. Okay. Yeah, titanium screws, the heads uh, are nice and tight. <laughs> I, I, it's one thing about them that it's a love-hate relationship. I love it because they're nice and tight and they don't strip. Um, and then I'll do the other side. Okay. And then I will take and go back to the first one I did. Make sure it's good and tight. Go to the second one. Make sure it's good and tight. And then I'll check and make sure it spins freely. Yep. And then I'll put in the other two screws the same way. Ugh. Again, pushing making sure the tip's in the head. Now, these get tight when they're run in there, so just be careful you're not like, you know, you don't touch the head of the screw right after, because even on the side of the case, the plastic got really tight, or tight, hot. Sorry, guys, it's late. It's been a long day, um, and I still have a bunch of stuff to do. So I'm gonna go, and now I'm gonna cinch up these two. Double check the first one, yep, the second one, yep, all those are good. Now. And just like that, should be a nice smooth action. It should smart, start, wow, sorry. It should start smoothly and finish smoothly. And then if you kind of run by and you see, like you can see in there, see how there's a little bit, you know, quite a bit of extra grease on that side. I'm actually going to take the edge of this fold it over and run it in there otherwise all it does is just fling on your car so the other side actually looks good that side now looks good too and bam i got a diff um, these are the new hdv2 cases so they come with the lighter pin holders um those have been and, and the new o-rings uh, what are those? TLR 242045 um, is the updated part number. But yeah, that's how I build a uh, eight scale diff pretty quickly. Again, not a lot of measuring. Um, and it's good to go. And I, I will build, trust me, one thing I do for people is build diffs. I build a lot of diffs. Um, pretty regularly. Uh, you should have seen what we did at Worlds between 
one person running and the next person running and the next person. We were building diffs in three minute intervals and whatnot. So, um, awesome. Hopefully this will be out there. If people need to see it, you know, feel free to share this with your friends or whatnot. Again, you'll see four is marked right there. So it's 4k. It's a buggy. So it's 4313, um, versus the truck 4310. And, um, yeah, it's got good bearings. Everything's nice and tight in this, you know, there's not a lot of movement. So kind of looking forward to, to breaking this in. Uh, benefit of the HD diff versus standard diff. Um, we actually run the HD diff case in all the diffs now. Uh, now that we have the composite pin holders, they're actually a pretty similar weight as far as a case, but they hold more volume of oil. And anytime you can hold more oil, they're just going to be more consistent over a longer run. Uh, plus, <clears throat> these do come with the new O-rings. The new O-rings are a much freer O-ring that still seals really well. Um, so the diffs just overall feel a lot better on the car and they feel more consistent from minute one to minute 58. So, um, yeah, that's a diff. That's a rear diff. The rear diff gets, uh, you know, in the 8X 2.0 gets the single line. Um, so does the, uh, front and rear of the 8XT and these are the HT, uh, high traction out drives. And then if you saw the last video. For some reason, I couldn't find the out drives. These are the new front ones. They're extra long. You can see, like, in comparison, quite a bit longer, if I could get them lined up right. Um, and they got two lines on them now. So the two lines go on the front. The one lines go on the rear. Um, yeah. So anyway, hopefully everybody has a good night, and uh, that will help you guys in the future or your friends that are just getting into this uh, be able to build a diff really quick. Other than that, it's time to get some sleep because i got to get up early in the morning after I pack and uh, everything else. So uh, looking forward to a race tomorrow, and um, hopefully everybody uh, is having a good time. I know winter's a, a lot harder for everybody, uh, well, at least for some people, because you can't run as much. Um we have a weekend that looks like it's going to be good rain-wise here, so we're all going to go run. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Um, help out your fellow hobbyist folks, um, and uh, enjoy your night, folks. Have a good one.